Hi there, I wanted to show off something I've been working on recently. So this is to do with search. Um, so as you might know in Venger, there are a couple of ways you can search through your catalog. There's the default search plugin, which comes bundled with Venger, which just uses the um, built-in search capabilities of whatever database you're using, like a full text search. And it's basically, you know, it's functional and it's it, it does the job, but it's not particularly sophisticated as far as search goes. It's not typo tolerant. Um, the matching is very, very basic. Um, so therefore we also have the Elasticsearch, plug Elasticsearch plugin, which is way more sophisticated, at least it can be. Um, Elasticsearch is, you know, one of the industry leaders for search. Um, there's a couple of drawbacks though I've found with Elasticsearch. Number one is it's kind of heavy resource wise, um, the amount of resources you need on the server to run an instance of Elastic. And it's also a bit complicated to get set up right. So it can do pretty much anything you want it to do. Um, but then you need to know a little bit more about um, how to set up the indexes right, things like um, the trigrams and the analyzers and uh, you know, the, the, there's, a, there's a lot of complexity that goes goes along with the power of Elastic. So um, I've been working recently on a third search solution and it's based on a uh, search engine called TypeSense. So TypeSense is an open source search engine and it's specifically made for uh, typo tolerant, fast, like instant search. Um, they build themselves as a, an open source Algolia alternative, if you know Algolia, um, an easier to use elastic search alternative, which is true, having used both of them, it's much easier to use. So here's the, the homepage, um, they've got like a, an example right here. Uh, it looks like they're searching 2.2 million recipes, so I'll just demonstrate here if I search for bao. Uh, I get some results, char siu bao, yummy, um, and that took four milliseconds. So it's super, super fast. Um, if you want to look into uh, more about the kind of pros and cons um, as compared to other search solutions like Elastic or Algolia, they do have like a really good comparison page right here. Um, and it's pretty detailed and like they're honest about what they don't do yet and what they do do and so on. It's not just PR, um, it's actually really useful. So it compares TypeSense against Algolia, Elastic and another open source um, search engine, kind of recent one called Miley Search, which is also a really nice looking project. Uh, anyway, so I've been building a new search engine, um, a new search plugin for Venger on top of TypeSense. And I wanted to just show you a little bit of the progress. It's not like ready for release, but there's something to show right now. So uh, the way it works is it is a drop-in replacement for the uh, default search plugin or the Elastic search plugin. It works just the same way. So in your plugins array, rather than having default search plugin, you drop in the advanced search plugin, very uh, inventive name that I've given it so far. So you set it up here. Uh, with a few uh, options to connect to the TypeSense client. So I've got TypeSense running locally in Docker on my machine here. Uh, it's actually really, really um, efficient in terms of resource usage. It runs everything, the whole search index, index is in RAM, which is why it's so fast. Um, and depending on the size of the, uh, you know, the volume of uh, products you want to index, it, that will determine how much RAM it needs, but it's pretty uh, resource friendly as in, in my experience so far. So um, let's jump over. So I've basically taken TypeSense. It does a lot of uh, stuff, advanced stuff like out of the box, like it handles typo tolerance. Um, you can tune the, um, the, you know, the weights of the different properties that you're searching. You can uh, add synonyms and, and, and all sorts of different stuff. So I've basically wrapped that into this plugin and I've made a, uh, a UI for it. So you can kind of do all these uh, definition, of definition of synonyms and all this kind of stuff direct from the um, admin UI. So here's a kind of work in progress UI I've got right now. 
So I'm searching over a data set here of uh, almost 11,000 product variants from our art shop. And I'll just demonstrate some right here. So I'll search for Loxley, they make canvases um, and other things. So let's see, it returns the results in 90 milliseconds here. Okay, 28 milliseconds. So the nice thing about this is that it returns results so quickly you can do this instant search where in your storefront you might want a kind of like, like the Google search bar does. As you type, you start seeing either results or suggestions. But let's say, for example, you want to see some of the top results as you type, then this works so fast, like less, always like almost always sub 50 milliseconds that you can have this really, really quick instant, uh, instant search kind of feel. A few more examples. Okay. Um, we can also tune the weightings right here dynamically. Um, and okay, I'll give you an example of something more advanced. So let's say I search for a hand. So I'm an artist, I wanna draw a hand. Um, we've got this like hand dummy thing here. I think this should this should actually turn up number one, but for whatever reason, the um, hand lettering set comes up first. Um, so I'm gonna curate this. So I'm gonna say, if the search term exactly matches hand, then let's set this um, product to position one. So let's save that. So now if I search for hand, now it's number one and you can see here it's been curated. So if we jump over to the curations tab, we can see that you know these are all the curations that we've got set up. And you can curate things up or down, however you like, or ignore results. Um, so synonyms is uh, something, you, if, if uh, you know something has got different names that are in common use, you could set up a synonym. So example with our stock is palette knives and painting knives. So a palette knife is like one of these kind of flat metal knives you can use for painting oil paints or acrylics. And some people call them palette knives, some people call them painting knives. So I've got a synonym for that. Palette knife. So if I search for that, then I get palette knives. That's all good. Or if I search for painting knife. Yeah, so if I search for painting knife, I also get palette knives, which is the way we want it. So that's the synonym in action. So the other part of the uh, plugin is analytics. So this is something that's completely missing from the other um, search plugins that we've got at the moment. And it's something really important when it comes to actually optimizing the search experience. So let's jump over to this tab. So with the analytics, we can see a whole bunch of um, information about what's happening with our searches, how many searches are happening. Um, this is just mock data that's populated, which is why it's like jumping all over the place wildly. We can see how many, um, what's, the, what's the percentage of searches that aren't producing any results. So that, that's something that ideally should be kind of minimized. The click-through cl click rate, so after doing a search, how often is a result clicked on? The no click rate, which is like the inverse, and the average click position. So, at what position in the in the search results do people click after doing a search? And that you know we want to get that lower towards towards number one. It shows that, that means we're getting more re relevant results. Um, we can change the time span. And we can like zoom in to um, you know a more narrow time frame. And we can also look at the top searches, for example. So this is in this time period, which search phrases have been searched the most? Or on the other hand, we want to see well, what's actually bringing up no results? Um, and you can you can kind of order these in any kind of different combination of um, sorts that you like. So I'll demonstrate like one use of this, no results. So if we look at the um, results that are producing no hits, um, this one's interesting, mannequin. Because we do sell a mannequin, this is like a little wooden dummy that you can use to, to uh, when you're drawing a human figure. We sell, we sell mannequins, but um, people have searched it 71 times and there's been no hits. So what's going on here? Let's try it. And there, uh, mannequin. That's right. Where is it? Well, actually, it turns out that 
there's two spellings for mannequin and, and our product is spelled in this way. So this is a perfect candidate for setting up a synonym. So let's say mannequin and mannequin. We'll treat these as synonyms and let's save that. Now let's go back and now if people search for mannequin, they'll get the man mannequin, which is what they intended. Okay, uh, oh, one other thing to mention, so the analytics, um, this is powered by ClickHouse, which is a, a kind of database which is optimized for um, storing analytics type data, like time series data, uh, like web analytics, or anything where, where you've got like lots of events happening uh, and, and accumulating in some big database, and you, you normally wanna analyze this data in like some statistical way like you've seen in the analytics dashboard. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it comes from um, Yandex and it's got a pretty big community and it's super, super fast and open source. So the analytics are built on that. Um, you can see here in the, in the options, we have this analytics strategy. So you can configure this if you wanna like throw your uh, search analytics into some other data store, you can write a strategy for that. If you don't want to bother running a ClickHouse instance, you can say new SQL analytics strategy, um, which is kind of just going to put it in your database, which is also fine if you've not got too many events happening. But uh, after a certain point, the um, you know running the analytical queries on this on your primary database might compromise the performance. So at that point, you might want to think of having a dedicated. Um, analytics data store like ClickHouse or something else that you might prefer. So, yeah, so that's where it's at right now. Um, this is going to be a paid plugin. So, um, yeah, uh, if you've seen the website since we released 1.0, um, there's a plugin section and it's got like about five uh, paid plugins listed. Let me just bring that up. Oops. Okay, plugins. Yeah, so we've got these enterprise plugins, uh, advanced search plugins. So that's this one right here that you've just seen. Um, yeah, there's a bunch more and um, these will be paid. These will be kind of, I've not fully worked out the pricing, but it'll be kind of uh, much less expensive than spending the time having yourself or your team write this um, for yourself. So um, I think it will be very much worth it if this kind of functionality is something that you or your business needs. Anyway, I'll keep you updated with these kind of things that I'm building. I'll, you know, the stuff that's not public, I still like to show it off because it's interesting stuff. Um, yeah, there you go.